Hi, I'm Judy Shaw. I'm on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I'm here with Matt Kobach, my colleague, and also joining us today is Robert Hergevet. Robert, as you know, is a well-known entrepreneur. He is the founder of Hergevet Group. He is a shark on ABC's Shark Tank and also a best-selling author. Did I miss something? It, you know, you seem like a very busy man. Oh, and a professional dancer. <laughs> and no, a professional no, dancer. That's right. I did forget that. <laughs> so it's great to have you here Thank joining you. us today. You're here for an Ask Me Anything segment. So send those questions in because we're going to be asking Robert. Um, let's start off. What was it like to ring the bell? So inspiring. I'm sick as a dog today. I've got some kind of a flu. I had to cancel a bunch of stuff this morning. I'm really sorry that you're not feeling well. Um, but you actually have to answer that. In the form of an emoji. Oh. <laughs> we still got a couple here. Let's see. All right. How would you describe ringing the bell today? I, oh, ringing the bell. Yes. Yeah. What was it like? Oh, yes. What would you say? You can. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so why, why that one? Yeah, why that one? It was a great experience. It was very, very motivating, very inspiring. I mean, we have a great company. It makes me want to go public tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. That's good. We want to hear that. I mean, this is the bastion of capitalism. This is where it all started. This is why America is such a great country. It's the free markets. So why are you at the New York Stock Exchange today? Well, we're here today. We want to highlight cybersecurity. You know, I think everybody's aware of what's going on with the DNC hacks and what's happening in the world. Our company just released a report on Hergevetgroup.com about the latest cybersecurity trends and it's never been more important or at an all-time high. Yeah. So tell us about these trends. What we're seeing is a lot of ransomware. Mm -hmm. um, every day there's more ransomware, there's more malware. There's five million new devices connected to the internet every single day. And as you connect wow. more things, that's more, uh, the attack surface just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Wow, that's definitely a lot of devices. <laughs> a lot of devices, yeah. So let's switch gears. Let's talk about your childhood. You have a very interesting childhood. Um, tell me about your beginnings and tell me what inspired you to start your first company. Well, poverty. Poverty inspired me to start my first company. Uh, but I was born in uh, a country which was Yugoslavia. It was a communist country back then, and it's now called Croatia. But my mom, my dad, and I, we crossed the border to Italy, mm -hmm. came to Canada on a boat called the Christopher Colombo with one suitcase. And, you know, here we are. And many years later, I started a business. And, you know, when you start with nothing and you have that level of uh, strife and hard work and poverty, it really inspires you to, to make something of yourself in life. Like so many people in America. I mean, we are in a land of immigrants. Yes. Yes, we are. So, what, tell me about your leadership style. What kind of a leader are you? I am a beat them until they succumb kind of leader. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if I want to work with you. <laughs> um, you know, I think leadership is one of those things you learn along the way. I think that people want to be led. They don't want to be managed. Uh, we have about 300 people in our company, and I'm very fortunate that we have an incredible team, and I work with some really amazing people. What's the best advice you've ever received, and who gave it to you? You know, I've worked for so many great people, from Warren Avis, who started Avis Rent-A-Car, to, you know, Mark Cuban gave me some great advice recently. Oh. Um, so I'm a sponge for information. Mm -hmm. I, I heard a great saying a long time ago, leaders are readers. And I love to read, and I love to soak in information, and I learn from everybody around me. That, that actually leads into a great uh, social submitted question. What's the most inspiring book you've recently read? Gosh, there's so many great books I've recently uh, read. I'm reading The History of CAA, okay. uh, which is the big media company, the agency. So inspiring how Michael Ovitz and three other guys started CAA. I find that incredible. I love stories of people who built great businesses. So you've also written three books yourself. Yep. What's been the focus of those books? You know, just different points in my life. And uh, one was called Driven. One was called You Don't Have to Be a Shark. Uh, forget what the second one was called. <laughs> the Will to Win. That's right. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I just try to pass on some information. I mean, I've learned from a lot of great people. If I can inspire or help with somebody else, it's goodness. So besides reading, are there other ways that you continue to learn and to grow? I, I, I'm a big believer in pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. I don't think any great achievement comes from comfort. 
I think the moment we're really comfortable in life and we look around and we say, gee, this is really good. I hope it stays like this. It's probably the beginning of the end, you know, especially in high tech. We're in the high tech business, constant change. And one of my favorite sayings is every day you wake up, there's somebody out there that wants to kick your ass. And so I really believe in that. I think you've got to make yourself better. So I'm always trying to do different things. It's the reason I did Dancing with the Stars. It pushed me out of my comfort zone. I used to race cars, all kinds of things that aren't necessarily comfortable. So you used to race cars, or aren't you still a race car driver? I'm not. I just yeah. ran out of time, and it was a great marketing event for us and our company, but mm -hmm. you know, you only have so many hours in a day. So I know you had a passion, or still have a passion, for Ferraris, which is traded here, by the I way. I do. That's right. <laughs> I do. Ferrari's an incredible company started by a guy in the 60s, Enzo Ferrari. Mm -hmm. uh, and how's the stock doing? Oh, let's see. It's down here. today. It's down a little. Yeah. But I think it's trading 59 or so, so I think it's that's going well. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, we actually have a Ferrari question. Oh, let's hear it. All right. When are you getting a lot Ferrari? <laughs> oh, I had a lot Ferrari. I got one of the first lot Ferraris really? in North America. Yeah. Uh, it's a great car. Yeah? yeah? Do you not have it anymore? Is it, is, it a, is it a sore subject here? It's a bit of a sore subject. Uh, not from my perspective. It was a great car. Uh -huh. I'm a, I still have quite a few Ferraris, but uh, I ended up selling mine, actually, uh, at the time, which, you know, for a variety of different reasons, but it was an amazing car. Uh, and it's a hybrid. What many yeah. people don't realize is the La Ferrari was a combination of combustion and a hybrid motor. So when Ferrari comes back and rings the bell again, you have to come, right? Oh my gosh, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> they brought, I think, 10 Ferraris, had them out on Wall Street. Uh, yes. How cool is that? That right? was very that cool. That was cool. See, when we, when we ring the bell for cybersecurity, we won't bring anything that cool. <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, let's talk about race car driving. So it's a passion, or it was a passion of yours. Were there things that you, that, that translated from, like, being a race car driver into the way you do your business? <laughs> you've learned that trans Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it, our business moves at the speed of light. Uh, a lot of change happens very quickly, and racing teaches you to stay focused mm -hmm. in, the, in the light of many, many things happening at once. So there's a lot of analogies to business and car racing. And then we actually have a few Shark Tank questions, but yeah. it couldn't yeah. get out of here without those. <laughs> so if you had to start a business from scratch today with one shark, which shark would you choose? Depends what the business is. Okay. Uh, one of the reasons our show works is we really respect each other, mm -hmm. uh, but we also hate each other, and we like each other <laughs> all in the course of a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And when we argue on the show, it's very real. Uh, and when we like each other, it's it's very real. So it depends what business I was going into. Everybody yeah. brings a certain amount of skill set. Yeah, from different you, you can see that on the show. I mean, yeah, you can for sell. sure. And that yeah. people go in wanting to make a deal with certain sharks because they know their skill sets. They know people are crazy. You know, people <laughs> are. Uh, any shark is is good for your business. Yeah. What yeah. was your most successful business that you've invested in on Shark Tank? Uh, per, uh, from a growth perspective, probably uh, Tipsy Elves. Oh, I saw which that was one. Great. But, you know, a bunch of the traders here told me they love Keen Home, oh. which is one of our, it's an automated, uh, smart vent for your house called Keen Home. And a bunch of the traders here loved it. So. I've got to say, on Tipsy Elves, me and my family bought Tipsy Elf ugly sweaters, warm, <laughs> warm for Christmas. They're incredible. Incredible. <laughs> so... What type of investor are you? Are you, um, with these companies that you're investing in on Shark Tank and, and others, are you a hands-on investor? Do you take a part in the day-to-day -day sort of? Do you step back, let them run the business? What's your stuff? Yeah, I think that's our biggest challenge, all of us on the show, is uh, Mark has a very large team. I have a pretty big team that helps me with that. But, you know, my challenge is I'm running a real business every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, our company's growing by 20% top line. 30-40% in some of our core services. We're 300 people. I started this company uh, 13 years ago with three guys. We did 400,000 sales, 160 million last year. We we hope to double in the next three to four years. So it's a lot of growth. It takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you have for budding entrepreneurs? You've got to create value. I think at the end of the day, if you know, if you have something that people are willing to pay for, that's value. And too many people just get into a business because uh, 
they like doing it, but they're not a subject matter expert. The world doesn't reward mediocrity. Nobody wants you to be good enough. People want you to be great at it. Okay, so I have one final question. Yeah. You talked about being a dancer as well. Now, you didn't win the mirror ball. Damn it. But you yeah. did come away from there yeah, with, you know, great. I think you kind of came away a winner, if you ask yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, tell me about that. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You never know what life gives you, and uh, there's a lot of opportunities in life, and started out on the show and I ended up marrying my dance partner, uh, Kim, and it was an incredible journey and who would have thought, if you would have ever told me that I would have been on the dance show, I would have said nine in a million years. If you would have told me I'd be married again, I would have said <laughs> nine in a million years, but it's amazing how Look life can work out. Look at yeah. that. Well, it's fabulous. Thank it's you. It's been wonderful having you here. Thank yeah. you. Matt, anything else? One last question. Yeah. When are all six sharks going to together ring that bell? Whenever you guys invite us. All right. You, uh, yeah. you are officially yeah. invited. This is the formal <laughs> invitation, it, it, right? It's yeah. hard to get six sharks together, as you can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. You can imagine. But it's hard to hurt the sharks. We'll work on <laughs> it. We're like geese. <laughs> geese sharks. We're everywhere. Well, thanks again. It's Thank you. Robert.